I'm going to rewrite this so that I have a one half power and I can use the power rule. So I've got three X squared plus X to the one half power. But what I end up with is a composition or a layering of functions. This one half is the outer function and the three X squared is the inner function. So as we differentiate, we're going to apply the chain rule. So here we go with the chain rule. It's going to be the outer function with respect to the inner function. So the inner function stays as is times the derivative of the inner function. So in this case, the one half power is my outer function and the inner function is three X squared plus X. Okay, so here we go. I wanna start with this outer function. It's a power rule, so the one half comes down. I leave the inner function. Power rule, I need to take that power and subtract one. Now my inner function was three X squared plus X. So I leave it as is inside of that first derivative, and I'm gonna multiply on the derivative of that inner function. The derivative of three X squared plus X is gonna be, let's see, bring the two out in front, three times two, that's six X plus one. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean up what we can. I can rewrite that power. Let me do it right here. So this is one half minus two over two, and we saw that to be a negative one half power. So I end up with one over two, three X squared plus X to the negative one half power. That is gonna live instead in the denominator. And then I've got my six X plus one. So if I put everything into a single fraction here, I have six X plus one in the numerator, two, let's go ahead and take that negative one half power bring it into the denominator, it's a positive one half or a square root, three X squared plus X. Now this is one form of the answer, but I wanna rationalize this one. In order to rationalize, I need the quantity on the inside to be squared. So I'm gonna multiply this by another radical, three X squared plus X. Top and bottom, so I keep this fraction balanced. 3x squared plus x. We are just about there. Continuing, I get 6x plus 1 times the square root of 3x squared plus x. Not a lot to do in that numerator. In the denominator, I've got two, and I've got this quantity inside the square root squared. Now, you can even just skip this step if you want. Because this is squared, I know that my square root and my power two undoes one another, and I can distribute my two through. Here comes our answer. So I've got six X plus one in parentheses, multiplied by the square root of three X squared plus X. That's all under that square root. In our denominator, I was able to drop the square root and I'm gonna multiply that two through. Two times three X squared is six X squared. Two times X is plus two X. So in this one, I've got ddx of cosine cubed of x. Now I really want to use a power rule here, so I'm going to rewrite this one. I've got a power three inside and a fourth root. So I can rewrite this one using a rational or fractional exponent, ddx. This is going to be of cosine x. The power becomes three over four. So I again have a chain rule. I've got my outer function f here, and my inner function g here. As I take that derivative, I've got f prime g, leaving that inner function fixed, times the derivative of my inner function. Okay, so the outer function is the power now three fourths that came from that radical. I'm gonna bring the three fourths out in front, so the three fourths out in front, and then power rule, three fourths minus one. On the inside, I leave the inner function fixed. That's gonna be cosine of x. But on the outside, I'm gonna multiply by the derivative of the inner function, negative sine of x. 
Uh, let's see, let's do this 3 fourths minus 1. So giving ourselves a common denominator, that's going to be 3 fourths minus 4 fourths. 3 minus 4 is negative 1, so I get negative 1 fourth. So what do we have? We've got a 3 fourths. We have a cosine x to the negative 1 fourth. And we have a negative sine of x. Now I know that that negative one fourth needs to go down into a denominator and it needs to change into a fourth root. Let me move everything up. This is going to give us a fraction. The three is going to stay in the numerator, the four in the denominator. For my cosine, I'm going to move that into the denominator as a fourth root cosine of x. But this negative sine x is going to stay in the numerator. So right now I've got a form of my answer, but it's not rationalized. So if you need to rationalize this answer, you need to get a power 4 inside of the fourth root in order to undo that. Right now I just have cosine 2 the first. So I need to multiply top and bottom by a fourth root. I need three more of those cosines multiplied in. So I need a cosine cubed of x to be multiplied in numerator and denominator, cosine cubed of x. Okay, so what does that leave us with? That leaves us with, let's put this negative out in front, so negative 3 sine of x, fourth root of cosine cubed of x. In my denominator, I have the 4 on the outside, and then I have the fourth root of, there are now four of those multiplied, so cosine fourth to the x, and I know that my fourth powers are going to, or my fourth power undoes my fourth root. So I've got my answer now, or at least one form of it. I've got negative three sine of x, fourth root of cosine cubed of x, all divided by 4, and then that's going to be cosine x, so 4 cosine x. Now I said one form of it, and that's because there's so many things that you can do when it comes to trig functions. You could write this cosine as a secant up in your numerator. You can change the sine over cosine into a tangent. So again, this is just one form, but it is a rationalized form of our denominator. It's a rationalized form of our function. You are getting this. There's so much more algebra that goes into these than the actual calculus itself. Take a look at the video that I've got here next. It's going to help you out so much. Good luck. Thanks so much for watching.